Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Beacon Pines. I am so excited to get back into this game. Uh, last we left off, uh, we died to some mysterious person in a mask and suit that looked like uh, they were handling toxic waste. Uh, but now we have the opportunity to go back and change uh, previous charms in order to alter the ending of the story. Uh, so because the first charm here, there's check marks next to all of those, so those have all uh, run their course. So the only option that we have is this one here. So let's go right into it. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step towards him, cracking her knuckles. Lucan knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... Shit. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Make a break for it. What have you done? Uh, did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, you little twerps. You gotta go come home eventually. Oh, sorry. Going all the way down. Investigate the Valentine Warehouse with Rolo. Okay, so because last time Rolo wasn't with us, so that's why we ended up with that ending. Sorry about that. Rolo can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes. With all that business about your mother and whatnot, Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Aww. Don't shame him. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house? Yeah. And how is that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's really home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is really around, in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Oh. I figured out he's got daddy issues. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Mommy issues. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Eris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Okay, that's kind of sad. I feel bad for... I wonder if it gives me any... No new stuff so far. I really don't want to talk to this guy again, but I guess I gotta. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nun Creed. Kinda in a hurry right now. Oh, sweet. <sighs> Boy's got too much of his father in him. Okay, we're gonna skip past him, too. I win. Little help? 
Good thing you didn't run into the fence. I am the champion. We were racing? Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around here? It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why we would take advice from second- Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution. Electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around the- How are we gonna get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. Rolo. Why did you do that? Paul always said, you can figure out what the plan is when we're done. Great. Now what? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. <laughs> okay. Well, we figured out last time that we gotta throw it. Throw these mushrooms at the fence. Whoa, you're a genius. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress me. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rollo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rollo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Oh god. Rumble. Did you feel that? What? The excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Rollo! <laughs> Check out this puddle! That's not normal. And this hose! You are anything but subtle, Rollo. Aw, oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder! No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. The dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rollo, it would be my honor to throw you in the trash. Come on, Lady Luck. So, what's in there? Is he gonna morph into, like, a mutant of some sort? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those... walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground Command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic. Ground Command, you're coming in 5x5. Five five. I, I have no idea what that means. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. 
I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. Scoot over. I'm coming in. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, well. <laughs> How did he not see that? Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude. I know what- I don't know what I saw. He's coming back, get down! Hmm, that's not suspicious at all. <laughs> the boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh god, tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca, do you know what separate- separate- do you know what separates run-of-the-mill detectives from ace detectives? Ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Willow felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Will held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, Deep Engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag in a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I'm not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime covered hand would there be in here? Oh god. Ah! I'm beginning to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. 35, 36, 37. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3. Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So, what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Hello? Calm down. No, of course it was the right thing to do.
start gathering folks, I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really. We just sort of ran around a bit. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstance are you to leave. What? If I am not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. Oh, and Luca. You left the icebox open yesterday. I also left the water running in the sink. We're not made of money, you know. Well, that was strange. Was it strange? Can I go out in... Well, I want to look around the house for a minute. See if there's anything new. And then I'll go out into the garden. A faint electronic sound floated in the air. Oh god, okay. Is that coming from upstairs? Oh, it's the walkie-talkie. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Rolo, is that you? Over? Strange. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Um, I am not to answer the door to strangers. Although I did say that I would not leave the house, I did not promise that I would not let anybody in. Hold your horses! Oh, it's Rock. Oh, hey, Roxy. If this is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday, is Rollo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rollo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rollo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weedwood, and then it was late and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. For all of... Anybody who might be watching this video, if something were to happen like this in real life, this would be the time to tell the truth. If your friend is missing, this would be the time to tell the truth of where you were. Just FYI. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rollo. Where are you? But I'm not allowed to leave. Gonna go check the library for my friend who's missing. 
Even though, hey, everyone's this. What? Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rollo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. God. I'm not gonna talk to the clipboard person. Well, I can't talk to him. Okay, I'll ask. Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. You could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problem, though. The important thing is, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. You're all a part of something special, Luca. Toby looked up from the clipboard excitedly. That's right. So how about you start by telling me... Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Gah, you joker. We're all part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. Broxy said sh she will be here, then she'll be here. I just don't understand why I'm standing around, doing nothing, and waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around, doing nothing, and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Ugh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weepwood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend time making posters. That would be great. Guess. Right, Fitz and I will check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. That crocodile still read. I haven't met two of those people. His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible. Oh my. He doesn't even see the danger he's in. Am I in danger? What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is completely under control. It just seems so terrible. Are you sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense. Young Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. You just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging. Oh yes, Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter, Beck, that... Now where did she run off to? Aww, cute! Wait, check the library. Library is here, isn't it? Is this not the library? Where was the library? That's the diner. Library was down here then? Nope. Oh! Puppy. Hey, Eason. History Museum! It's laughable, really. Did you hear it? Did you happen to see Rollo here? Nope. Just the shadow of a family. Clinging on to a town, clinging on to the best. Feel free to check for yourself. But don't expect to have your mind blown. Oh, I can go in there, though. Hey, Griffin, has Rollo been by? Haven't seen him all day. I'm sure he'll show up safe and sound. 
I don't remember the voice I gave this character. <laughs> and when he does, tell him there's strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him. On the house. I like that. Can I smack the watermelon again? I can. Okay, I'm done. Okay, here I go into the History Museum. Sharper Valentine, a celebration of excellence. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here, in Beacon Pine. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck, a scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Riverfence Fund. Well then. You're right, it was very lackluster. That was... unhelpful. It was. Uh... So the diner was this way. I don't know where the library was. Hey, Dawn. <laughs> Is it true about Rolo? Yeah, he didn't come home last night. I wonder if it's connected. Connected to what? I was checking in on reports about increased activity around town. What sort of activity? Windowless trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights. Your typical shady stuff. Who would be doing all that and why? Well, I have a few leads. Valentine family is always suspicious. Perennial Harvest certainly has the resources. Do you have any idea where Rolo could be? The best place to start looking is where the trail went cold. Where did you see him last? We were in Weepwood. Right by Valentine's Fertilizer. I'll check out Weepwood when my shift ends. I do my best work at night. <laughs> Cause you're a bat. I love her. Dawn is my favorite character, but I am kind of biased because I like bats a lot. Oh, oh, here's the library. I thought this was a bookstore for some reason. Is a penguin? Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. Wow, impressive. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Kato? Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. The fuck is Melatology? <clears throat> oh, hey, Luca. You snuck up on me. Good book? Dunno, just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Ah, I see, I see. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? I knew a high percentage of did, but I didn't know that many. Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? 
Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Hardy har har har. There's a puppy. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rolo come back? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here. Early, on days, when a new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Oh, Roger that, Space Cadet. Mycological phosphorescence. Ugh. More like my complete loss of interest. No, phosphorescence is cool. There are things that glow in the dark naturally. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Uh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Boring. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin-offs. Uh, were they comics or graphic novels? Or were they manga? Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's Simple Succulent Sundries. Sally Seashore's Simple Succulent Sundries. Sally Seashore's Simple Succulent Sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Ooh. Ugh, I want a burger now. And I can't eat burgers. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time, by Patrick C. Montesquieu. How narcissistic. <gasps> what sort of pot monster puts candy behind a locked door? Okay, you guys can't see my facial expression, but like, oh my god, he's so cute. The little black kitty. Oh yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You're new here? Yep, not by choice. Beck's family moved often giving her little time to establish any real connections. It's a she. It's even better. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Also, I just want to mention, the reason why it's even better that she's a girl is because I also have a black cat. Her name is Soot Sprite, uh, so it just reminds me of her. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Bye, Beck. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep. Well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's 
go find him. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. <laughs> I love her. Black cats and bats, man. Joey, have you seen Rollo around? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes on the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. He never came home last night. You think it's because it's colder than normal? I don't see why that would have anything to do with Rolo. No, with the beetles. Do you think the temperature confused their circadian rhythm or something? Who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Just keep an eye out for him, would you? Of course. Oh, this is keep out. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Can we go around? Well, we can! Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. What does science suggest? Poke it with a stick. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. Ooh. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Uh -oh. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yep. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Ah, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've properly been introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once, on account of you not being... Uh, on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dude? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of such a pathetic kid and... Aw, oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> punch this kid in the face. Don't punch kids. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My family. <laughs> well, look who's grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First his pops croaked. Then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the... Strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. Looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong, you damn new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yup. Stop being a weirdo. 
Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wacko do? Makes sense, wackadoos travel in packs, eh, did? At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Ah. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk, my clothes are ruined. Iggy's I'm gonna... voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. I don't feel so good. Ugh. I'm sorry, I just... Oh shit. Yup. Uh, okay, well, don't touch the green stuff. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Uh, okay, can't, can't cross that. Can I go back here? Nope, guess I gotta go down. That was intense. He's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. The person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? We have to find Rolo. You took the words right out of my mouth. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just helping look for Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. He just got a little turned around in the woods. They can be disorienting, you know. I'm starting to get that impression. Rolo's at his house now, getting some well-deserved rest. Wow, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get you lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. I can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. No, don't trust him. I need to talk with Nelly about work tomorrow. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess all is well that ends well. I'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Good, because I don't believe him. Gran is going to kill me. Oh, well, that too. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 Our Harvest Awaits Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Gran? I'm home. Everything's fine. Gran? She's not here. You were tricked. Gran? I know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I was just helping look for Rolo. Luca was... alone. The house was empty. So Gran's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do but sleep, I guess. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. 
His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Lucas scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Rolo? Faintly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca! Rolo, is that you? Luca! There? Rolo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank God. Listen, I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? Rolo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. Listen to me, someone grabbed me yesterday. What? The man in the hazmat suit? It was... took me to some sort of... I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seem more interested in... For now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Kerr? No! Trust! He's... Hold on, someone's coming! The signal went silent. Rollo? Rollo, where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. Rolo's voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. You need to... The treehouse. The treehouse. With that, the signal died for good. What was he trying to say about the treehouse? Maybe go there, Luca. What's at the treehouse? The antenna. He wants me to use the antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Ooh, it's so pretty out at night. What about Graham, though? Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. So, we all understand our roles. You can count on me. I think we need more time. This wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly by while that danger persists. Hiram, you keep your... You just keep your wits about you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. You're right. You can count on me. 
I just we could have made I just wish we could have made that deal with Eris Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I said, I had no time to contact As I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans chain. How is Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all. I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Spark Plug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined look. Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Gran. Why are you meeting with Mr. Fratelli and Mr. Mrs. Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver late at night? Hey, Luca! Ah! Dawn, you scared me. Oh, just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Mr. Tolliver and your gran enter the diner together. When my shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool of any investigative reporter. Time. When they left, I tailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They mentioned the festival. Yeah, I heard that too. Has your grand been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Hiram Tolliver, it seems. She was either furious or terrified. Or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of the scope of a lifetime. I will. Aren't you coming out? Nah, I'm gonna stick out here for a bit longer. See ya, Luca. <laughs> so shifty. Okay, to the treehouse. Rollo? Rollo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rollo. Mr. Kerr said you were all right. Mr. Kerr's a liar. A dirty, filthy liar. What happened out there? Dang it, Rolo, where are you? Oh, God. Who... who's there? Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here. So you'd better come out right now. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Yeah. Weapons. Yeah, 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 yeah. How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. Who are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? You don't recognize me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess I don't even recognize myself anymore. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. I'm a monster. <laughs> and now they help me like I'm the beast I am. Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Don't touch me. This is all your fault. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I'm so sorry. I... I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for one second. And I get to be like this forever. There must be a way to fix this. Oh, you gonna be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day. 
with his positive attitude and power of friendship. I... None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all through Weepwood. I only came here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca! Luca! Rolo? It's not safe! Luca! Rolo, where are you? The treehouse! I'm at the treehouse, Rolo. Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe! They said they were going to the treehouse! I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse! Who said they were going to the treehouse? The clipboards! I'm sorry, who? What did I tell you? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. Sort of questions. They were saying the same stuff they always do. But it's different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well. Thanks. Hello? Is anyone present in this arboreal domicile? Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here and I'll see what they want. Oh my god. That's poor. I didn't know there was more than one. <laughs> uh. Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh, be down in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. You have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? Is it them? Yeah, it's the clipboards. Bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They were saying the same stuff, but with the creep, creepy knob cranked to ten. Might young Iggy be present? We would love to hear his thoughts. Run! Iggy slumped to his knees. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Iggy, there you are. You gave us all a heck of a scare. Go away, just leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry, though. We're here to help. Help? Then why were you chasing? Luca, can you talk some sense into your pal here? Just look at him. He's not well. What's wrong with him? What did that gunk do to him? Well, that's a pretty honkin' big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. You told me Rolo was okay, that he was back at his place resting. He is! Poor fella just got a little lost. That's a lie. That is a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why? Because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Kerr's smile faltered. Why don't you pop down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Yelling like this is gonna give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? Luca's grip tightened on the MCDC. What did you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca. 
The only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was home. He is resting, and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle, and I am the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option he had left. Fight! Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight! He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Hey, Mr. Kerr! Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. <laughs> hey! That was uncalled for. More than a little rude. And just played unsanitary. Luca, I really did think we were good pals. What a shame that it comes to this. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. End this. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Okay. Okay, so that is another ending to this game. There are a few, well, actually, I don't know how many more endings there are to this game, but I know we haven't gotten to the true quote unquote ending yet. Um, so I'm going to leave it here for now and hopefully we'll get this, um, this game wrapped up in a, in a few more episodes, but until then, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, your week, whatever, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!